So we're gonna read a book and mom has treats. And the book is about a dog, okay? And that's why I figure that you guys should be in it. So here's a cookie for you, Leona, and for Alice. And boy, I have a lot of treats here. So maybe one more treat and then one more treat. And then I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to put these away so I can actually read or you're gonna probably be on my lap. So my name is Megan Stockton. Um, I'm here in Lake Forest, moved here when I was nine. Really, I'm gonna give you the treats. Um, and I am so excited to read a book. Uh, the Lake Forest Library reached out and asked various people to read books. And I thought, because we have these two great rescues who we adore in our family, um, that I would read a book that we loved when the three kids were little. But I still love it. And we kind of have two dogs that look a lot like this dog. So the story is by Rory. Lerman and the pictures are by Allison Bartlett and we're still looking for treats. Charlie's Checklist. It's got great illustrations in it. This book is well loved. There are some rips. Charlie was born in the countryside, but he had his heart set on living in the big city. When he was old enough to use the telephone and write with a black pen, he sent an ad to a London newspaper. The ad ran in the personal column. Six week old puppy, young, naive, and irresistible, looking for a suitably enthusiastic owner. Must be under 12 and wear glasses. Applicants, please send photo and references. Charlie sat and waited for the replies. He was the smallest puppy in the litter and the last one out. All of his brothers and sisters had found owners already and he was feeling lonely. But he spent his days making daisy chains and sleepless nights counting sheep. But the sheep always fell asleep before Charlie did while he was counting them. Boy, oh boy, was he ready for a change. And this is where I'm gonna say, this story is about sometimes what you're looking for is right in front of you. Then one day the envelopes started arriving, small ones, long ones, thick ones, round ones. He had a stack of envelopes so high, he needed a trampoline to reach the letters at the top. He had so many replies to his ad that he had to hire an assistant to help him sort through the pile. He chose Chester from the farm next door. Chester had sneaked into the barn the night that Charlie was born. He had been his friend ever since he was born, he had, oh, excuse me, and had, was eager to help out in any way he could. Between the two of them, they organized two piles of letters, no's and maybes. Charlie had a checklist of strict criteria. What is criteria, asked Chester. A list of must-haves and must-bees, said Charlie. What about this one, asked Chester. I'm Lou. I already have two dogs, two hamsters, two rabbits, one kitten, and four fish, and I want you too. Charlie shook his head. Must have room for me. Hi. My interests are butterflies and beetles. I collect them in jars. I wear thick glasses and have big feet for stamping on ants. Charlie shook his head. Must be kind to animals. I'm Roger. I want to be in the circus. I need a partner to join me on my travels. How about it? Charlie shook his head. Must provide me with a stable home. You are hard to please, said Chester. Charlie felt that the search would go on forever. At night, he and Chester counted the stars as they sat on top of the barn. They would laugh about the letters they had read that day, and sometimes they would play cards until the birds woke up singing. You know, you won't see that many stars in London, said Chester. Stars don't matter very much in the big city, said Charlie. There are so many other more exciting things to look at there, cars and trucks and tall buildings and lots of different people. 
Oh, said Chester. I suppose you're right. Finally, after two weeks, Charlie opened the letter of his dreams. Hi, my name is Naomi. I live on the 15th floor in a penthouse suite. I would love to look after you. I know we'll be the best of friends. I'll take you to all the museums and to the theater. I'll give you eggnog at Christmas and brush your coat till it shines. Be mine. Charlie ran circles in the barn after he read the letter. Then he ran outside and ran all around the barn and into the woods and around the trees. He was so excited. We have one dog down, by the way. Chester giggled when Charlie came back. He was covered in leaves and panting. Isn't she perfect, cried Charlie. Chester looked a little sad. Yeah, said Charlie. She seems great. So I guess you'll be leaving soon. Leaving, said Charlie. Oh, so I will. Oh, I need to pack immediately. Will you help me, Chester? Chester agreed and walked back home to find a suitcase. Charlie couldn't understand why Chester was dragging his feet. Finally, thought Charlie, I'll have someone who wants me all to themselves, someone who will love me forever. He decided to check through his list of criteria one more time before he called Naomi. He pulled out his page of must-haves and must-bes. Must have room for me. Charlie looked all around the barn and out into the woods beyond. He could see forever. Must be kind to animals. Charlie remembered the time Chester pulled a stinging nettle from his nose. He had to put a big pink band-aid on it, special first aid cream. Must provide me with a stable home. Chester walked back into the barn. He was carrying a suitcase and a pack of cards. I thought you could take these with you, he said. Maybe you and Naomi could stay up late some nights and play. Charlie now knew why Chester was dragging his feet. His tail dropped between his legs and he put his very silly, he felt very silly having overlooked his best friend of all. <sighs> I've been thinking, said Charlie. I'm not so sure dogs are allowed into museums or, or theaters in London. And I've heard that eggnog is really gonna upset a dog's tummy. Chester's face turned all at once into a huge smile. Let's keep looking through those envelopes then, he said. Sunset that evening found Chester and Charlie on top of the barn. They were not sorting through envelopes. They were playing cards and starting to count the stars as they peered in the sky. The envelopes kept arriving for Charlie, so many that they filled the whole barn and Charlie had to move in with Chester. Every day, Charlie's checklist grew longer and longer. Must wear red pants and with white striped overalls. Uh, must be four feet, three inches tall. Must like playing ball. Must have five freckles on each cheek. Chester, lock tra Chester lost track of Charlie's checklist, but Charlie never lost track of Chester. The end.